Welcome one and all. I'm Mark Passio of WhatOnEarthIsHappening.com. My presentation here today is entitled, The Deadly Pandemic That's Killing Anarchy. I've been invited previously to Anarchapoco events, and I'm glad to be back here for this year's 2021 event. And uh, I have to unfortunately inform you that I'm going to be the harbinger of some bad news, as perhaps people may have perceived me to be in past events. Uh, I am here to tell you today that the anarchist community is not succeeding in their efforts. And I am here to tell you the real reasons why that is. And hopefully for people with the eyes to see and the ears to hear, they will begin to understand this dynamic or perhaps to understand it more completely. So let's jump into the presentation here today. And before we even begin, as with all, all my presentations, I'd like to give some caveats. Uh, and at the risk of even completely, um, you know, making people upset before they even hear a word that I have to say, I'm going to say some harsh truths. Because I'm not here to soft sell you, you know, on me, my personality. I'm here to tell you things that you may be completely uncomfortable hearing. That is what my charge is to do, and I'm going to do it. So I'm not here to soft speak to people. I'm not here to baby spoon feed the truth to people. I'm going to treat you like responsible adult human beings that you should be. And I'm going to tell you the harsh truth. So I'm not here to be your friend. So get as offended as you want. Get as offended as you like about what I'm going to say today. This is my approach in all my work. You know, because this isn't about a social club. It's not about a popularity contest. This is about changing the world for the better. And we don't really do people a disservice by coddling them. So I'm not here to coddle you. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm not even here to quote unquote be nice. You know. Not all nice people are good people. And, you know, you don't necessarily have to be nice to really truly be morally a good person. You know, I don't really find that that approach really works. I think it shelters people and coddles them. I'm here to speak the harsh truth of to the people of this world that they have completely willfully ignored and rejected for so long a period of time that we're in the situation that we're in. Humanity's ignorance and rejection of the truth that I'm going to speak here today in this presentation is exactly what has gotten us into the mess we're in as a species. So my warning to everybody listening before I even begin is you ignore the information or reject the information that's not, that I'm going to present in this presentation here today at your own peril and at the peril of the whole human species. Because what I'm going to present here today are not my, my thoughts, my opinions, my likes, my preferences. This is matter of fact, objective truth that is discoverable by all. And the reason the anarchist community is in such dire straits and the world is completely plunging into a totalitarian nightmare is because most of the anarchist community don't understand the truths that I'm going to speak in this presentation here today. So, what do we want? We want the absence of authority. We want the absence of rulership. That's what authority means. That, that's what anarchy means. Okay? Anarchy means that no one is in charge of anybody else. It doesn't mean chaos. It doesn't mean all the things that the mainstream media pushes. It doesn't mean violence, lawlessness, etc. Okay? The, so, let's establish a base definition of our anarchy, which is what we all want. That's what we're here to try to manifest, to try to make flourish in our world. So for anybody who isn't familiar with the correct definition of anarchy, the true definition of anarchy, let's establish it once and for all time. The word anarchy is derived from the Greek prefix an. They're written in the Greek characters in parentheses there, meaning without or the absence of. And the Greek noun archos, meaning ruler or master. So anarchy literally means from its etymological roots as a word. Without masters, the absence of masters, without rulers, the absence of rulers, or as I like to word it, no masters and no slaves, or in other words, true freedom. That is what anarchy means, whether you understand that, know it, 
want that to be true, accept it as the truth, or not. That's the definitive truth of the matter, regardless of anyone's perception of the matter. This is one of the things we have to understand is that perception does not equate to reality. People believe perception equates to reality, which is why they believe they can invent definitions of words. And this is not what the word anarchy, this is what the word anarchy means. It does not mean chaos, lawlessness, etc. That's what people in positions of authority want people to believe because they want to believe if their authority goes away and the violence that is a result of their uh, direct result of their perceived authority goes away that somehow there will be chaos and lawlessness everywhere and nothing could be far further from the truth than that so we have to understand real definitions number one okay and you know m m this is what we have to teach others many people do not understand this dynamic so that being said, let's now look at what is really going on in our world, okay? What we want to see is the growth of anarchy, of true anarchy, of the understanding that no one is an authority over others, that there are no, there is no legitimacy to rulership or being the master of another person, meaning perceiving other people as their slaves. There is no moral legitimacy to that. That's what this movement is truly about. It is not about wanting to do harm to anybody. It is not about destruction of anybody's property or, or rights. It is not about chaos or lawlessness. It is about the destruction of human slavery. That is what anarchy is. Anarchy is ending the perception that some people have the moral right to rule others and that others have the moral obligation to obey their commands. That is what anarchy is about, ending Okay, so is anarchy growing? Is that understanding in human consciousness growing? I would say absolutely it is not growing. Anarchy is not growing, ladies and gentlemen. It is being pushed out of mainstream consciousness. Authoritarianism is growing. The hardening of the belief in authority is growing in the minds of the public. The understanding of anarchy is growing in an infinitesimally small group of people, a handful comparatively to the total amount of people in the human population. On the other hand, authoritarianism is growing rapidly. People are cheering on the draconian authoritarian measures that are being enacted by governments worldwide during this nonsense that we're experiencing that's being called a pandemic, which is a globally engineered, socially engineered, perceived crisis that if people weren't so brainwashed by the mainstream media, they wouldn't even notice anything different is occurring in human society. And that's the problem, folks. We're dealing with television heads. We're dealing with mainstream media watching ignoramuses that don't even understand how ignorant they are. And this community is failing at their job in educating the mass public. As a matter of fact, I hear over and over again by members in, in this very community, it isn't my responsibility to educate my fellow human being. I've heard it over and over again. I don't know whether you guys have ever heard that dynamic, but I've personally heard it out of people's mouths over and over again. Why should I take my time to be the educator of another person? That's only their responsibility. And it shows me how little people understand what the real work is to do. And that is to reach people who have bought into the mind control of the mainstream media and change their minds, help them to change their minds. And yes, that is an unbelievably massive effort, but can it be done? Yes, it can be done if enough people make it their charge to do it. And sadly, not enough people have made that their life's work. They're still too concerned over their own situation and trying to protect what they believe they have. So, why is the anarchist community really, truly failing at this work in helping to influence and change the mindset of others? And it isn't about explaining all the machinations that are going on in government. It's not explaining all of the manipulations that are going on in the financial markets, etc. No. It's way, way larger than that. And unfortunately, the reason that anarchists haven't done it is because of what I'm going to talk about here today, this pandemic that is actually running through the anarchist community. 
So the main question that needs to be asked is, why have anarchists failed to stem the rising tide of authoritarianism? And indeed they have. If you believe we're winning, you're delusional. If you believe anarchism is rising, you're delusional. Sorry to break it to you just like that, but you need to hear it if that's what you think. Authoritarianism is, authoritarianism is rising, and anarchists as a, an entirety, as a body of people, have not stemmed the tide of rising authoritarianism. And all you need to do, if you believe that, you, that, that it has, all you need to do is visit any major city in the world and look at the attitudes of the people. They are abjectly ignorant and abjectly under mind control and abjectly rooted in authoritarian beliefs. And if you don't believe that, I think you're living in the middle of nowhere and you're sheltered as a human being. And you need to wake up and you need to go into the heart of population centers and really look at the dynamic of consciousness that is taking place there. Because if you don't, and you're just from some rural area or from suburb, some suburban community, and you believe because of the friends you have and, and frequent and talk am amongst that anarchism is rising, I think you're a delusional human being. And you don't understand the real dynamic that's taking place in the world. So let's look at this question. Why have anarchists failed to stem the rising tide of authoritarianism? And there's, there is a correct answer to this. And here it is. A deadly pandemic has spread through the anarchist community itself. We do have a real pandemic, folks. It's not COVID-19. It's not COVID-2020, 2021, or whatever else. The garbage mainstream media at the behest of their government ma you know, puppet masters are going to tell people. But there is a real pandemic taking place in our very community. You know, it's not, uh, it's not COVID-19, but it's certainly destroying anarchy. It's a virus, okay? It's not this one. It's a mind virus. That's what it is. It's a virus of the mind. And if we want to even go a little bit deeper than that, I would say it's a virus of the human soul. It's a virus of the spirit that is blocking the reception of real spirituality, of the real understanding of who we are. Because it's not really that present in the anarchist community. It's present in small amounts. I'm not going to make a blanket statement here, but let me tell you something. It's probably present in less than 10, truly in less than 10% of the anarchist community itself, let alone the wider body of humanity. It's far less than that. This virus is omnipresent. I would say it affects no, at least 90% of the anarchist community and probably up to 98 or 99% of the whole human community. And it, this is what it is. It's a virus of the mind. And you'll notice that there, it's other someone else tinkering in someone's mind. It's not even the, the, their own, their own person doing it. It's other hands in there with tools. You know, I picked this graphic very deliberately to illustrate that. And it works just like a computer virus, folks. Because the mind, in many ways, works like a computer. It isn't exactly a computer, but it has characteristics of computing. This is what learning the whole trivium process is about. Understanding how people come to the conclusions they come to in their thoughts and their actions. Because of the information they have taken in or have not taken in. So just like a computer virus, this information, which is bad and is viral in the way it is spread and the way it negatively affects the mind and therefore the way it negatively affects all of human society, it spreads like a computer virus, very much like a computer virus. It gets into the code of the brain and the mind. It changes it into something that is reminiscent of malware. It's malicious code. And then it gets spread. It copies, like it gets copied in email or it gets copied across a network to other minds, to other human computers, okay? And then it just gets spread throughout the whole community and it's a rampant infection, which is called a pandemic, something that is a malware that is present everywhere. And that's what we're in. We're in a pandemic of the mind, certainly in the whole human community, but absolutely also affecting the anarchist community. I'm talking about the majority of the anarchist community. As I've said, I believe the number is over 
to understand how affecting in a negative way the mind works and how that's so important and how we should never underestimate the ability of social engineering and the social engineers who conduct it and how we should never treat it lightly such that we think, oh, somebody else's ignorance isn't my responsibility. Yes, it is. That affects you. That affects me. I've worded it in this way. Other people's ignorance is our enslavement. It's the enslavement of you and me. So if you don't want you and I enslaved, okay, you better worry about other people's wrong ideas. And you better work to change them. That is our responsibility collectively, as a community and as a species. What I'm explaining here in this slide is the principle of mentalism, which is the first principle of natural law in the universe. The first universal principle of all manif manifestation of how we get the results of what we put out into the world. The mind is what ultimately directs and manifests all change in our environment, for better or worse. Whoever is directing what is going on in the mind is also engineering the change in our society. So once again, folks, are we directing that change of the mind toward the truth and toward, toward real principles and toward real positive change? Or is someone else externally affecting our minds and doing that and therefore steering society in the way they want it to manifest? I think the answer should be clear to people who are paying attention. But, you know, sometimes I'm not really so sure that this community is. I think they don't really believe that mind control goes on. Many of them are not familiar with occult principles because they see the word occult the way others see anarchy. Others see anarchy as chaos and lawlessness when in fact it's true freedom. And this community often sees the occult as, oh, ridiculous beliefs and little practices that, you know, cr crazy, uh, you know, weirdo people do. And they don't understand what the occult is, is deep ancient psychology about how the human mind works. And if th a small amount of people understand how that th those dynamics work and the bulk of humanity does not, it's a piece of cake to manipulate people and bring them into whatever mindset that small, you know, community of people in the know want to direct them. Piece of cake. Taking candy from a baby. So the question that this community really needs to be, be asking is whose hands are these? That's the question that you guys need to ask and learn. That's The scope of that is an entirely different presentation. I'm not here to talk about that today. I've talked about it extensively in my other work. But that's what you guys need to ask yourself and you need to find out about and learn. And let me tell you something. I'll just give you a quick hint, folks. It's not just the international bankers. Most of you think that that's who it is. It's not the politicians and it's not the bankers behind a lot of the political machinations. It goes way deeper than that and you need to understand it. And you need to understand that it's an occult priest class. And most of you will be resistant to that, that idea. And like I said, go ahead and ignore what I'm saying at your own peril. It's your funeral. It's actually all of our funeral, but largely this community will be driving that dynamic because you claim to be the people in the know and you claim to be the people who will help steer society in a better direction, but you have incomplete knowledge. You have incomplete information. And a lot of you ridicule it and you don't know what's really going on. And I'm here to tell you that. So this mind virus, what actually is it? We haven't actually pinpointed it yet. What is the actual virus that is driving the pandemic in the anarchist community? Well, here's what it actually is, folks. It's moral relativism. It's moral relativism. And folks, let me tell you something. If you don't think that that's true, that that's the virus in this community, once again, you're not paying attention, you're not doing your homework, and I think you're partially delusional. If you don't understand that this is the dynamic that's stopping the true reception of re the real dynamics that are driving people into totalitarianism. And let me tell you something, folks. I have scientific evidence to bear this out. This isn't a belief. This isn't just something that I picked out of the sky. I've done social experiments for probably about the last 13 to 15 years asking people whether they believe that morality is objective or subjective. And again and again and again and again, no matter where I do the experiment, in what city, in what town, at what time or place, the results invariably come back almost identical. Two-thirds of human beings minimum, depending on, it, it's always at least two-thirds, depending on the area, 
It could be slightly less than that, but always at least two-thirds of human beings are moral relativists, including in the anarchist community. I would hope that it's a little less percentage-wise than that, but I would guarantee you it's pretty close to that. If it's a 60-40 split, I'd actually be impressed. But I'd say it's probably closer to two-thirds like it is everywhere else. And I've done these experiments, and I have the data to back up this claim. I've done the social experiments in large numbers in different places in the world, and it always comes back identical. At least two-thirds of people are moral relativists. So let's define what moral relativism is. Moral relativism is the ideology that objective morality does not exist inherently in nature, and that right and wrong are merely subjective constructs which human beings may invent and arbitrate according to time, location, circumstance, or preference. In other words, as I'm putting here in the uh, speech bubble with uh, all these people in silhouette here, right and wrong are whatever we as human beings say they are. And let me tell you something, folks. This is the basis of all of man's law which anarchists say that they do not want to live under. That's why something could be a right in one area and a wrong in another. Moral relativism brings that dynamic of the violence of man's law into being. And then when you talk to people in the anarchist community, many of them will say, I don't believe in objective right and wrong. It's a subjective thing. No, it's a belief that it's subjective. You know? That's the, 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 the dichotomy that you need to understand. Something can be a belief that it's an opinion, but that doesn't make it true. I'm not asking how many people believe in moral relativism. I just told you what that basic dynamic is. It's at least two out of three human beings, probably growing in number. I am talking about, is there actually the objective truth in nature about what right behavior is and what wrong behavior is? And there is a truth to that. And the answer is yes, it is objective. And no, it is not subjective. And that is a science as well. That is not just an opinion. But there's a lot of people out there listening right now that will tune me right out just for saying that. And you're the problem. You, yourself, are the problem driving humanity into enslavement. Because you believe in subjective morality. And I'm going to explain right here today how that dynamic actually works. So that's the actual definition of moral relativism. And if you agree with this ideology, you are the enemy of freedom. Let me just restate that unequivocally. Blanket statement. Every single human being that believes and agrees with the ideology that objective morality doesn't exist in nature and that right or wrong are subjective constructs that mankind can make up you are the enemy of freedom. You are the, the kind of person that is putting humanity into enslavement. Absolutely, definitively true. Blanket statement. Get as offended as you want. So, there is a virus in the anarchist community and it is moral relativism. But why is the prevalence of moral relativism in the anarchist community so critical to understand? Why is this the linchpin? Why do we have to work to eliminate any you know, spreading of this virus of moral relativism throughout our society and throughout society as a whole? Throughout our community, number one. It's a dangerous ideology that is being propagated and it is leading to human enslavement. You need to understand that definitively, ladies and gentlemen. And if you don't yet understand that, you're not really paying attention to the real dynamics that are going to turn things around. Let me tell you something. Cryptocurrency isn't going to be the thing that turns the dynamic around. Uh, creating intentional communities that bad people in, in government costumes are just going to come and, and, and destroy is not the ultimate solution. I'm not dismissing you know, the ability of people to do good things like that. But it's not going to get it done in all of humanity. It's not going to solve the problem. The real problem is this mental virus. That right and wrong can be arbitrated by mankind. And it's everywhere. 
It's everywhere. You go into major population centers like major cities, this is the most rampant mental virus that there is. And our community is not insulated from it. Why is that dynamic so important to understand and change? It is because an understanding of moral relativism is one of the most important dynamics to understand when it comes to understanding of natural law. So the first question is, what is natural law? And I'm not talking about the nat natural law that some philosophers talk about being, you know, uh, or some um, people in, in politics talk about being uh, related to common law. It's way, way beyond that. This is forces that exist inherently in nature, in the universe, that mankind has no control over whatsoever except to understand and to exist within the boundary conditions of just like gravity, just like electromagnetism, just like laws that dictate human health, just like any other physical law in creation. This is spiritual law. This is universal karmic law. It brings to us the consequences of the behaviors that we put out into the universe, like a, a reflective mirror. And this is the deepest occult understanding that people who have held occult knowledge tight to themselves so that they can manipulate the rest of the masses the masses of people have not wanted people like you to understand from day one they say this is for us to know and not for them to know so we can manipulate them like i said like taking candy from a baby and that's exactly what they're doing it's not even a contest they can manipulate the situation at will because the population is ignorant of natural law. Natural law is a set of universal, inherent, objective, non-man-made, eternal, and immutable conditions which govern the consequences of the behaviors of beings with the capacity for understanding the difference between harmful and non-harmful behavior. That means it applies to human beings and those of higher level consciousness than human beings. It does not apply to species that are of lower cognitive ability to understand the difference between right and wrong than human beings. Natural law is consequential law governing dynamics of behavior that apply to human beings and higher levels of consciousness. Meaning, if you can definitively understand what the difference between right and wrong is, it doesn't mean if you do. It means if you have the capacity to understand what the difference between right and wrong is, natural law applies to you. And that means it applies to all human beings, objectively and inherently in the universe, in nature. This is a scientific law and a scientific understanding. There are laws that apply to human behavior that this community doesn't want to acknowledge, and I'm going to explain why they don't want to acknowledge it. The understanding of natural law is centered upon two things. First, it is centered upon the knowledge of objective morality, which means if you don't have the knowledge of objective morality, you can't really d definitively understand how natural law works. And two, it is hinged upon or centered upon the alignment of our behavior as human beings to that knowledge of objective morality. Which again, that's predicated upon the first principle of understanding the objective morality first. Understanding real objective moral principles. So this means that we must know, not think we know, not believe. This has nothing to do with belief. This is not a religion as I'm going to explain. Okay? This has absolutely nothing to do with belief systems. Natural law is actually about the destruction of all belief systems. It is about definitive knowing of an occulted law inside the universe, in nature, that is not able to be just perceived with the eye or traditional scientific instrumentation, but it is knowable by its measurable and observable and repeated effects when it comes to what we receive as a consequence as a whole in society. And all you need to do to ask yourself whether we understand natural law is what are we receiving as a result? Are we receiving freedom right now, or are we receiving abject enslavement? And then you'll know how many people really understand natural law. That's the factor that's driving the whole dynamic, folks. And many of you guys still don't understand it. And let me tell you something. It's really pathetic, and you should understand it by now. 
You haven't dug deeply enough. You're still skirting the surface. You're still scratching the periphery. And you haven't dug into the heart of the matter. And no one else will really tell you that. I don't really care whether you... It's your karma whether you accept this, folks. It's not mine. I'm okay. This is your karma. This is what you're going to have to answer to in creation. In nature. In the universe. You're going to have to answer to it. I'm fine with it. Many of you will stay in a delusional state. Many of you will stay in a spiritually deadened state. And you'll still poo-poo this, and you'll say it doesn't exist. And it's your funeral, it's your enslavement. But just remember, you will be held accountable karmically to the enslavement you subject others to because of your ignorance as well. Don't think it won't happen. You you could, like every other totalitarian regime and everybody that brought it on, you could poo-poo that and you could mock it and you could say whatever you want about it. But guess what? When the day comes you leave this body, you'll find out. You will find out whether you believe that you will or not. And then it won't be a joke. It's a joke to you right now, just like it was a joke to people in the Soviet Union and a joke to people in Red China and a joke to the Nazi regime. It's just as much of a joke to you. So keep laughing about it, but when you die, you're going to find out. You know, And you can laugh about that statement too, and that's okay. Like I said, your funeral, your enslavement, and, me- and other people's enslavement because of your ignorance. So this is a wake-up call, folks, in the anarchist community. You don't understand, you haven't identified the, the governing dynamics yet. And you need to. And you need to make it the primary thing that you talk about and teach. Instead of worrying about cryptocurrencies and intentional communities first. You're putting the cart before the horse. This is the horse that has to lead people into an understanding of real freedom. Anything you build before this foundation is laid will not stand. Get as offended about it as you like. That is objective, eternal, absolute, immutable truth. So we have to definitively know which behaviors are right and which are wrong. That means knowing which behaviors are right because they do not initiate harm to other sentient beings and which behaviors are wrong because they do initiate harm to other sentient beings. That is the the bottom line foundation. And while people in this community claim to know that they don't understand the wider framework and they don't understand why moral relativism is so dangerous. Moral relativism prevents the understanding of natural law. And as we're going to see, that's why it prevents the manifestation of true freedom. So how does this whole overarching dynamic work in nature? This is how human behavior delivers the result of the human condition. That's what natural law is. Let me state that again, folks. Natural law is the governing dynamic that governs how the choices of human behavior, in the aggregate sense, ultimately govern and bring the consequences of what is to be the human condition that we are then going to have to live in. So it's like a big mirror. It's like a big reflection. The universe reflects our aggregate behavior back to us and delivers us the result, the consequence of what we choose to enact through our behaviors. And that's how you can understand how this dynamic scientifically works. All you got to do is look at the result and then you understand the cause. This, these are the laws of cause and effect. People have called it the golden rule. People have called it the laws of karma. They've called it consequentialism and many other names. I talk about it from the perspective that it really is. It's the laws that are embedded in the fabric of nature. These are universal, moral laws that govern behavioral consequence of human beings and higher order intelligences than human beings. So here's how natural law works. When human beings in the aggregate, meaning in the collective as a whole, as a species, not just individually... When human beings in the aggregate live in harmony with natural law and are therefore moral, they become and remain free. When human beings in the aggregate live in opposition to natural law and are therefore immoral, they become and remain enslaved. And this happens over long swaths of time. This does not happen instantaneously, obviously. This is why understanding a long view of history is so important. And it's so important not to repeat the mistakes of human history. We should learn from it, study it, learn from it, and don't repeat the mistakes that our ancestors made. 
Because right now we're at a critical moment of choice. This is a junction point in history where if we don't learn these laws, we're going to go straight into the cosmic toilet bowl. We are going to be flushed out of existence painfully. And people who don't think it's that severe, you're deluding yourself. It, this is an extremely serious situation that we're in, and this is the choice point. This is it. So I have referred to this dynamic of natural law in my own work as the law of freedom. Freedom has a law that governs it in nature, as everything does. There is nothing that is above universal law. There are laws in the universe that govern everything. As aggregate, this is the law of freedom, ladies and gentlemen, as, as aggregate morality increases, aggregate freedom increases. That means as a society in general, as a species in general, becomes more moral because they understand objective morality and they live in harmony with objective morality and its laws, then they become more free. And as aggregate morality declines, aggregate freedom declines and enslavement grows, enslavement rises, totalitarianism rises. As a population as a whole becomes more immoral and ignores objective morality, they become more and more enslaved. So all you have to do is ask yourself the dynamic, the question of the overarching ruling, governing dynamic of nature that no one can escape the consequences of. You are, you are ultimately ruled by this as are, is every other sentient being that has reached at least the capacity <clears throat> to understand the difference between right and wrong. You are governed by these laws. The question has to become, has our society behaved morally in the aggregate? Well, if they have, well, what will be the consequential result? Freedom. If they have not behaved morally in the aggregate, what will be the consequential result? Enslavement. Slavery. That's it, folks. That's how the dynamic works. There are only two possible outcomes. Only two possible outcomes when it comes to natural law. And we are rapidly approaching that one on the right. Either humanity learns objective morality, the definitive truth about objective morality, knows the difference between right and wrong, and it aligns its aggregate behavior as a species to natural law, to objective morality, or it will collectively, if they do that, they will receive the consequence of freedom. If they don't do that and they fail to do that, you're going to get the result on the right. That is the state where humanity refuses to learn objective morality and refuses to align its aggregate behavior to objective morality, to natural law. You're going to get the result called slavery. That's how the law of freedom works. Inescapable, immutable, cannot be changed. Everyone is governed by it, but not everybody understands how that dynamic works and even believes that it's in effect. And that is why we're enslaving ourselves because we remain ignorant of this dynamic. Every anarchist must learn this, or they cannot truly propagate real anarchy to any other being, because they don't know it themselves. And this is how the dynamic of whether freedom manifests or whether slavery manifests works. That's how it really works, ladies and gentlemen. Not because I said so. I am just like any other person in the history of humanity that has objectively learned a scientific dynamic that exists in nature no different than how electricity works or how magnetism works or how gravity works. No different than any physical dynamic. The thing is, you have to apply your mind and the understanding of principles to something that is not going to be put under a microscope and seen. This dynamic is an occult dynamic. It's something that is not easily seen. It is hidden from physical sight. You need to use third eye sight to be able to understand how this dynamic works. And it's my sad, th you know, reality to have to say that most of you in this community don't have that sight. It's a shame. I feel bad for you. I feel bad that you still can't hear the truth of it. Because guess what? You know, what has it been? Three or four years since I first spoke to this community at large? Is anybody? Do I see any rampant change in the teaching of natural law? 
Do I see this being the main thing that everybody is talking about in the anarchist community? No. Which tells me you really don't understand it or believe that this is the case. And guess what? I'm not telling you you need to believe it. I'm telling you you need to know it. It's not a belief. It's how things work. And you haven't figured that out yet. Which relegates you really to the same classification that the people you think are asleep are. It's cosmic childhood. You haven't reached adulthood yet. Cosmically. Spiritually. You're still really acting as a cosmic child. And people who are in that place of abdication of responsibility to learn how things really work can't really affect positive change. You only think you can, delusionally. Here's why moral relativism has to be stamped out of this community and really all of our all of the whole earth if we're going to ever really make any positive change manifest. Since the understanding of natural law is predicated upon knowing the objective difference between right and wrong behavior, moral relativism, which is the belief that there is no such thing as that objective difference, makes the receiving of the positive consequence of freedom under natural law completely impossible, and it ensures the negative consequence of slavery. That is how the law of freedom manifests in our world, through our thoughts. We are creating the reality that we are, are going to experience collectively in the aggregate. Folks, you got to understand this dynamic and start teaching it. You're, you're, you're way, way behind the curve. If you haven't fully understood this yet, and you haven't made it the main body of what you're going to try to reach out to help people to understand. And part of this is most anarchists do not really understand where rights come from. And most importantly to that dynamic is most anarchists do not understand that rights do not come from human beings. I, and I've done this social experiment. I've done it in the just regular community of total imbeciles, morons, and you know mental cretins out on the street you know, who barely know their own name. I've, I've conducted this social experiment to ask them where rights come from in, in, in just the general ignoramus public. And I've done it in the anarchist community. And guess what, folks? It's just about the same. Sadly, I'm sad, horrified to report that to you. Most anarchists believe that rights come from human beings. And you're delusional. Delusional, absolutely delusional creatures if you believe rights come from human beings. Because, as I'm going to explain in this slide, if rights come from human beings, human beings can take rights away from other human beings. That's just where it comes. If, if it comes from inside people, then enough people could get together and they could say there are no such things as rights. And many of the people in the anarchist community believe that nonsense, that there's no such things as rights. I've heard that coming, sl just blabbering out of the mouth of some people in this community. It's pure ignorance. Pure ignorance. Get as offended as you like. Rights don't come from human beings. Most anarchists fail to realize that if rights can be arbitrated by human beings by claiming that this is where they come from, then by definition, rights can also be completely eliminated by human beings. That's just def definitively, factually true, but just by definition. That if humans are the source of something, then they can wipe it out if they so choose. And if you believe rights come from human beings, then you believe at any given time, when enough people get together and make the decision, human beings can destroy human rights, period. That's what you believe if you believe rights come from human beings. And I know why you don't want to accept that rights come, don't come from human beings. Because that thing called religion that you believe, that's what predicates that notion. And no, it doesn't, folks. I'm non-religious. I'm actually completely anti-religion as I've stated an innumerable amount of times. I think all religions need to be destroyed, every last one of them, including non-traditional religions, secular religions, need to be destroyed. Re government is a secular religion that needs to be destroyed. The belief in money and what that does to people to make them completely selfish beings that don't really care about others is a religion that needs to be destroyed. Get as offended about that as you like. That doesn't make me a communist. Just like saying that rights, 
you know, don't come from human beings doesn't make me a fascist. They're both totalitarian positions that need to be destroyed by understanding the truth of the matter, which is rights don't come from human beings, they come from the universe, they come from nature, they come from God. If you're not happy, comfortable with that word, tough. It's the same thing. They come from the source of all creation, which isn't you and isn't a group of other people. Only by understanding that rights are objective in nature can we ever ensure that no one, no one, no group of people will ever be even perceived to have the ability to re revoke or remove rights from anyone else. That cannot be done factually in nature. It can only be claimed to be done. And even the anarchists believe that at some point, human beings would have the right to do that. You do. That is what you believe. Don't lie to yourself. If you believe rights come from human beings, you believe humans can revoke them at some given time, given enough popular support for the revocation of a right. Don't lie to yourself. It's by definition true. It's true by definition. Being a moral relativist means that you don't think there's objective rights. And therefore, if enough human beings get together with enough power or consensus, rights can be revoked. That is what a moral relativist believes. And here's why a lot of the anarchists out there have fallen into this false religious mindset. Because that's what it is. It's a religion. See, both of the things on the left and right are religions. They're religions. A lot of people in this community have not broken down their religious mindset yet. They believe they have, but they have not factually done it in nature. In point of fact reality, they have not done that yet. There's two, this is called what I call the worldview schism in my work. This is a dichotomy in worldviews that leads to people buying into falsities and false religious mindsets. One is the left-brained, imbalanced worldview of randomness. This is where somebody doesn't believe there's any creator, doesn't believe, they think the universe is a grand cosmic accident. There's no creator, no underlying intelligence in all of nature. There's no such thing as spiritual or moral law. There's no such thing as karma. There's no such thing as natural law. Everything's just random events. Existence has no real purpose other than to continue to exist and survive or pass genes down to the next generation. These are all the hallmarks of what I call scientism, which isn't real science, it's belief-based science. Government grant money funded based science. Atheism, which is a religion and a false one at that. And totalitarianism. This is what every totalitarian regime wants to get people believing. If you know history and you're honest with yourself, then on the right, we have another imbalanced worldview to the right brain schism. And that's the God controls. This is the determinism. This is the belief there's nothing you can do about any of it. It's all predetermined. The opposite of it's all random. And there's not really anything you can do about it because it's all random. You know, you see where both of these lead? Both of these lead to a non-understanding of how the dynamic of freedom versus slavery really work. So you really don't take the right actions to steer things toward freedom. And that's what the occultists know all of this. They know this like they know their name. They know it like the back of their hand. And, and you don't. And that's how they can manipulate society. Because if you're ignorant and they're in full knowledge, once again, no problem to manipulate you and all of human society. What the hell do you think's been happening? So this worldview is that God, determinism is God controls every event in creation. All occurrences are preordained, no matter what we do. So that makes free will an illusion. M many people in this worldview think free will doesn't even exist. And since God controls everything in all of creation, and it's up to that being or force's will, ch or ch us changing anything is completely impossible. So why bother to try? So what's action? Action's meaningless because everything's predetermined. It all just comes down to faith and what you think. These are the hallmarks, of course, of religious extremism and what I call slave think. 
It goes, see how that goes hand in hand with totalitarian beliefs? This is the, the, the Hegelian dialectic that they have in all things, in politics, in, in everything. This is the mental schism that they want to put everybody in. The truth is the middle path, that there is a deterministic component to all of creation, which is natural law, which we cannot change, that those are the immutable laws of consequence in nature. And then there is free will to interact with those immutable laws. We have the ability to choose what behaviors we will enact. That is the random component. Our behavior is not set in stone and we, we can steer the outcome. That's the great news. That's the good news, folks. That free will exists in tandem with natural law. So if we learn how natural law functions and we learn objective morality, we can align our behavior to it by an act of our own will and get the positive result called freedom. The problem is so f few people are really knowledgeable of this dynamic, this occult dynamic, that most people are not really doing that or teaching it. And so in our ignorance, we're just totally steering the ship directly into chains and bondage. Many anarchists incorrectly perceive natural law as a religion. Again, I'm going to speak to all your unfounded and wrong concerns for those who are in the left brain randomness schism in that dialectic. And the anarchists perceive natural law incorrectly as a religion because they've thrown the baby out with the bathwater because of their left brain worldview schism toward this randomness worldview. That there's, there's no creator, there's no natural law, there's no consequence for behavior unless you get caught by human beings. You know? In this left brain schism, the analogy, in this analogy that you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater is, you've identified that religion is a big problem, and you, in throwing religion out, in, in washing that away, you've washed the baby, the thing that should be kept and the bathwater should be discarded, but the baby should be kept, that's natural law, that's true spirituality, that's objective morality. You've thrown that right down the drain with the bathwater of religion. Because you don't have discernment. You know, you were triggered into an, a reactive belief system. That if, well, religion's the bad, this isn't true, we've been lied to about this, this isn't objectively true, well, you go right into the arms of all spirituality is nonsense and all, you know, everything, you know, all, all religion is bad, so you've taken the religion, th correctly thrown that out, but you've rejected true spirituality and objective morality with religious beliefs because you have incorrectly tied those things inextricably together, and they are not one and the same, and they, yes, they can be separated things. You have to distill true morality, objective morality, and true spirituality out of the nonsense called religion, out of the traditional religious beliefs, belief systems that are dogmatic and are not doing any good to society and are ultimately harming society. But this community largely hasn't done that. Some of you have, some, but I would say it's a minority. Because of most anarchists' hatred for organized traditional religions, and believe me, I'm right there with you, traditional religion is a plague, a plague that needs to be destroyed from human consciousness if we're ever going to be free. You know, I believe in the Dennis Diderot quote, humanity will never be free until the last king is strangled with the entrails of the last priest. Absolutely true. But that doesn't mean throw out true spirituality. That doesn't mean throw out true morality. That doesn't mean throw out natural law. Those things exist objectively and inherently in nature. And to throw them out is to throw freedom out with them. So because of their hatred for organized religion, and even the religion called government, which absolutely is a religion and should be hated, many anarchists have subscribed to another false religion called atheism which largely denounces objective morality in almost every school of atheism, objective morality is taught as false. And thereby, by subscribing to atheism, that is preventing the understanding of natural law and ensuring, thereby ensuring, the negative consequential result of slavery in human society. That is how the dynamic really 
genuinely, objectively works in the natural world, folks. Not a belief system, not a religion, it's how we are collectively creating the experience of the human condition that we then must live in. That is how it works. If you reject it, you're rejecting words of wisdom and truth, not because they came from me. I'm a nobody when it comes to this. I'm a nobody. Tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of human beings in the past have made this discovery. It's a scientific discovery that unfortunately has not reached the understanding of the mainstream masses of people. And it hasn't even reached the, the mainstream of the body of the anarchist community. And that's the problem. That's why anarchism isn't growing. This deadly pandemic of moral relativism and the rejection of natural law is what's killing this community. And it will continue to slay it out of existence. The longer that this isn't the focal point of the work in this community. And like I said, get as offended about it as you want. It will never, it doesn't make a difference. You could hate me. You could hate what I'm saying. You can get as offended. You could shut the damn video off. It doesn't matter. It's still true anyway. It's still true. And your rejection of it is still your funeral and still your enslavement. Regardless of what you think of me or how I'm saying it. I'm done saying things nicely to people. You put us into this situation. You put me into this situation. I'm not happy about it. I'm done being nice about it. I don't need to be nice about it. I've taught this for 15 damn years of my life with with the society completely in decline and collapse in in a, a total plummet at free fall speed. Freedom's falling faster than building seven. I'm supposed to be... Happy-go-lucky about it and say things all in a flowery voice? No, nah. No, I'm street real. All right? I don't need to say anything like that. At the risk of offending anybody that want, doesn't want to pay attention. Like I said, your karma, not mine. I could leave this world today and I'll be all right. You, some of y'all are going to have the problem when that time comes. I'm just going to wrap up on this point. And you should seriously consider it. If you've taken any offense or think that any part of what I've said here is wrong, incorrect, or you have a problem with the way I said it. Okay? You guys are ultimately the problem. Just like I said to people saying on the anti-mask protests. Oh, it's all about politicians and changing their decrees. These are... This is coming from status. They think begging the politician is the answer. Change the law in our benefit, master. Well, in many ways, you guys are almost just as delusional as them. Because you're not doing the internal great work. You think you could do the external great work before truly performing the internal alchemy that has to be performed. And let me tell you something, folks. It's a delusional mindset. It can't be done that way. It's a stepwise progression. The internal alchemy work has to be done before you could assist anyone else in their change of consciousness. And this community is sorely missing the point when it comes to that. And folks, I have have data to back up that assertion. I'm not making it blindly. I'm not making it just randomly. I'm pulling it out of the air. This is what I think. This is what I believe. No. I've... conducted extensive research and talked with people and have the numbers and the results of the conversations. I do social experiments with people all the time. It's part of what I do with What on Earth is Happening, with my work there and with the One Great Work Network. That's part of my work to gauge where the consciousness is so that I can help help people to understand what they're not doing correctly and where it needs to go to make real positive change happen. So I'm going to leave on this note. You got to do the internal work before you even attempt the external. And most anarchists, like other people in the patriot community or whatever 
intentional community they're trying to build. They want the external situation to change, but are still very, very ignorant when it comes to the actual dynamics of what will change the external situation. They don't know definitively deep in the mind and in the heart what the real governing dynamics are, namely how natural law functions. Most of them don't want to do this great internal work to change their own consciousness. They are loath to do that work. They run away from that work. Because the thing that scares them the most is the mirror. The thing that scares them the most is the mirror. They don't want to work to change their own consciousness. That's why they focus almost entirely on the external secular factors. Such as politics and finance. That's what most of this community, since the day I've been interacting with it, has been focused on. That's why I've been telling them this, that that's going to lead them into deeper bondage. Because they're not doing the real work. And that's why I've been very unpopular in this whole community. As a whole. Not Anarchapoco specifically. I think, in general, the Anarchapoco community mostly is gives a decent reception to me and my work. For the most part. I'm talking about the wider anarchist community here. That's who I'm really addressing. Okay? And I'm telling you, it's you'll never create the change that you want to bring about into the world the way you're going about it. It's impossible. By focusing on those external secular factors, such as politics and finance, instead of the infinitely more important psychological and spiritual dynamics upon which they should place their focus. They are ensuring the negative outcome of slavery by continuing that. Because natural law and the understanding of how the laws of freedom work is not their true focus. The dynamic and the principle has to be objective morality first and foremost. That's why it's called principles. Principle comes from the Latin principia, which means first things. You have to put first things first. That's why the horse is natural law, principles, objective morality, and that is what will usher in the cart called freedom. That is the truth that exists in nature, not because I've said it, but because that is an immutably inherent to nature, true dynamic of creation forever and ever. Get as offended as you like by what I said here. Ignore what I've said here at your own peril and at the peril of the freedom of all of the human species. But what I've said here today is still and will still remain true. That's all I have to say.